Hey guys, so I thought we would start this vlog with a bit of like PR sharing. This is really exciting. So it's this website called Hush. I have this opened upside down, but it comes in like this really adorable box. And let me share a few of the items um, that I picked out. Sometimes they just send you stuff, but I really like it when they let you pick things out because then I can give you like a really good review. So the first thing I have here is from Callis. Uh, this is one of the brands that is on there. Now, this is one of those kind of, I guess, insta-famous type products. It is one of those winged eyeliner stamps. So that is a swatch of the stamp and the eyeliner. Now, the eyeliner, I'm not that crazy about, but the stamp actually did not look that bad. However, it's just too thick for my eye shape. So basically, when I use this, I had two very perfect wings. They were just really thick. So I think this would work out well for someone who does thicker eyeliner or you have larger eyes. This is the actually the slim version. So there's a, a stamp that you'll get that's even larger than this. So... I wanted to like really love this. It's one of those, like I said, it's like one of those like insta famous things that are kind of fun, but like might not work for everybody, but could work for some. Next up is this nail polish from Santi. It's a mirror effect nail polish. And if you look at it, it looks like it says it's the shade bronze. When I uh, opened it up, the it looks more like that. So it didn't really flatter my skin tone. So I didn't want to be like, hey guys, look at this really awesome color. But it's just not for my skin tone. So when I wore it, it did not look good. But if you are cooler toned, you might like this. Next up is an item from The Ordinary. The website carries The Ordinary. Any site that carries or retailer that has The Ordinary, I'm like immediately interested. So this is the Magnesium Asorbyl phosphate 10%, a brightening hydrator with stabilized vitamin C derivative. Now the instructions for this, which I love about The Ordinary, is that it says you're supposed to put this on after an application of a water-based serum. So I have not used this yet. I will definitely get back to you on it. I'm currently using the Clarence Double Serum, which is 50% oil and 50% water. So this would probably act odd with this, but when I do use it, I will share it with you in the makeup breakdown and those like weekly vlog sharing things. Next is this product from JCAT. It's the Lux Pro Powder. I got mine in the shade Pearl. Looks like that. When I first swatched this, I was blown away. I immediately was like, I need to add this to a body oil. I need to add this to a body lotion. Like, I wanted to have like a permanent thing that I could spray or spread all over my body with this product in it. It is so beautiful. It does not look like a powder. Okay, so here are both of my hands. This hand has it and this one doesn't. I mean, it's very obvious, but look at how beautiful the shimmer on this is. It's extremely subtle, but imagine if this whole thing was like all over your body, your skin would look so luminous. Okay, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it because it's one of those that get a little messy. Let me do like more of a fresh swatch for you. I mean, look at that. So that's like two layers. Isn't it gorgeous? I mean, there's a banana, but I mean, I've had my fair share of banana powder, so I decided to just kind of go out of my comfort zone and try something that's like a loose powder. It is beautiful. So let me give you a little bit of background on this website. This is a website. This is like a me website. If I had found this on my own, I would have shared it with you immediately. But just not to beat myself up over it too much, this website probably launched this year. It has all these brands on there that I wish I could buy off of like the Ulta website, but I can't because I can't shop off of the Ulta website. I've talked about it a lot. I've used different credit cards, I've used different like email addresses, I've tried checking out as a guest. For some reason, I just can't shop off of the Ulta website. So many of the brands that are on Hush are also sold at Ulta. So for me, it's a huge convenience. On top of it, like I said, they've got The Ordinary, they have Elf, they have Koki, they have JCat, LA Girl, all these brands that I've been wanting to try for a really long time, but they're just, they're not accessible to me. They're, I can't swatch them in the store, or they're like online only like brands. So let me show you some really fun stuff. They have so many brands that do like dupe products. Okay, so for example, let's say you're interested in the Modern Renaissance from Anastasia. They have this palette from Bad Habit. It gives you a really great picture of the palette. And then, this is like my favorite part, you get swatches do you see that full-on swatches from what i've seen they swatch pretty much every 
face product, every eyeshadow palette, uh, maybe there are some products that don't have swatches, but do you know of any websites that actually give you swatches? Like it's, I love that. This one is currently sold out. But this is also by the brand Bad Habit and it's called the Aphrodite Eyeshadow Palette. It's $10 and it's a dupe for the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Palette. So again, swatches. Okay, so let me share with you guys what's in my cart. I have the e.l.f. Lip Exfoliator, $3. I had received the rose scented one from e.l.f. and I like it, but I kind of prefer mint, so they have the mint one on here. And then they have the LA Girl Strobe Light Powders, and I have been wanting to try their highlighters for so long. They're $7 on the site, and I think there's like two I'm debating between, like a number 80 and number 110. The J-Cat uh, Baked Highlighters, super into that. I'm tossing up between White Goddess and Crystal Sands, I think. They have Milani, they have NYX. I can't even go into like all the brands that they carry, and the prices are either like equivalent to retail or lower, which is even more of a draw for me at least to shop there because you guys know I get a coupon for everything. I literally never buy anything unless it's on sale. So I do have a code. You guys can totally use it. If you go to the app, if you like to shop on your phone, they do have an app and there is no minimum for free shipping. So you can go on there and buy like one item and they'll send it to you for free. If you shop on the website, then you can use the code. I'll link it below and it will give you 10% off. The minimum for reaching the free shipping threshold on the website is $25. So you can like kind of decide what gives you a bigger discount. Either you buy like two items and you just shop off the app and it's free shipping, or if you're gonna spend over $25, you might as well shop on the website, use a code, get free shipping, that kind of thing. So it's just up to you. Okay, last but not least, Hush sent me these two palettes. And I was gonna keep them, cause you know, they're for me to review, but then I was like, an even better idea would be to like give them to you guys. So we're gonna do a giveaway. This is from Bad Habit, which is one of the brands I mentioned to you, and it's called Retro Love. Um, I'm not gonna swatch them, obviously, but I will open them to show you. Look at that. Exact dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette. Okay, so I looked at the price of the this palette. It's $10. Uh, on the Hush website, so you can get it from there if you want, if you've been interested in the subculture palette, but we're gonna do a giveaway in this video. I think, um, I mean, it'll be the usual things, you know, you have to be a subscriber, leave a comment, that kind of thing, you'll be entered. The only thing is, if you don't wanna be entered, you can just say that, that way I don't, I can like skip your comment if you get picked, you know? Okay, they also sent this sugar palette. This is by the brand Face Candy, and I think it's a dupe for a Too Faced palette. It's like like a really sturdy palette, has super cute packaging. Um, I'm not sure exactly which Too Faced palette it's a dupe for because, I mean, I can't keep track. Also, there are so many Too Faced palettes that are like in this configuration that I really don't know which one it is, but really, really pretty. I'm just so obsessed with this website right now because there's so many things. Like if you like see like those like plasticky type sponges or if you've seen any kind of thing that's been like super hyped on like social media, it's all on here. On top of that, they carry brands, not just like the drugstore brands I talked about. They have The Ordinary. They have a lot of Korean brands. They even have The Balm. And it's just like, so it's like, all kinds of different brands. I just really like the way they curated this like website. There's just, whatever you're looking for. And I love Milani, I mentioned before. I think a lot of the Milani on here is cheaper than what you can get it for at the drugstore or on the Milani website. They have the NYX Slim Lip Pencils for $1. I know for sure that's cheaper because I buy those all the time. Whatever, I'm gonna move on. But I highly recommend because so exciting. We have a little box from e.l.f. Uh, I actually think we'll include these items in the giveaway too, so if you, leave a comment to enter the giveaway. Besides receiving the Retro Love palette, you'll probably get one of these. This one has one of those plastic silicone sponges as well as a regular sponge. And then this one is a duo and it has like a smaller plastic silicone sponge. And then this one is like a huge one. I've never actually seen ones that are this big. This could be great for the body maybe. I have no idea. Um, You'll probably also get one of these 
matte to shimmer lip transformers. There's a red and a berry. Um, I'm just not going to touch these because you guys know I like do nude lips all the time. If I open these, it's just kind of a waste, but really cute like idea. I guess if you just want to play with, actually the berry one looks really good to me. There might be a nude in there. I'm not going to open them because I don't want to ruin the packaging. Lastly, they sent these things, which I'm obsessed with. Here's the thing with e.l.f. I might not love everything I get from e.l.f., but I love all of their lip products. Their lip lacquers, their lip oils. These things are so cool. Look at the packaging, first of all. They're kind of jumped on that kind of like holographic trend. So these are called Beauty Shield Lipsticks. This, this one is called Red Siren Screen. And when I looked at it, I was like, oh, it could be a nice red, but it's actually very cool tone. Like this would look horrible on my warm skin tone. So we're skipping this. I'll probably add this to like either the giveaway or we'll put it into like the blog sale. Like if you buy something from the blog sale, I'll just throw this in as like a freebie. But I did open this one. It's called Dusty Rose. And there is a nude shade that I'm looking to pick up also. Look at this packaging. It is so cute. It's holographic. And then you open it up. It feels really sturdy and nice. They're minty. They go on like a lip balm. You guys know how much I love things. Anything that goes on like a lip balm, I'm all over that product. So I've been doing really smoky eyes lately and I'm gonna be doing very smoky eyes, I can predict, through the fall and winter, absolutely. So this shade, Look at that. It kind of has a lilac base, so I guess I guess it is a dusty rose, but to me it's a very lilac base, and I've worn it a couple times just to kind of like test it out because it's not like my normal color. It's a little grayish purple on me, which I really like. So when my eyes are really smoky, I can kind of mute out my lips with this. So excited. I wonder, does it have like... No, it doesn't have SPF, so beauty shield. Maybe it's one of those like, it protects you from the environment type products. Key antioxidants, sunflower seed oil, pomegranate seed oil, vitamins B and E for best results used with Beauty Shield's SPF 30 gloss. Ooh, okay, I will be looking for that. I want the SPF 30 gloss. Okay, so you guys can note that too. I'm always looking for stuff with SPF for the lips and for the under eyes. I feel like there's so many products out there that like you can put on your face and your neck and your body, but getting stuff for the under eyes and getting stuff for your lips that have SPF, I'm always interested. Okay, so I need to find that gloss. Okay, so giveaway, we haven't done those in a while, I'm kind of excited. So you'll get that palette and you'll get some stuff from e.l.f. and you'll get probably whatever else I decide to throw in to kind of like, I don't know, balance out the weight of your package. And that's, anyway, on with the vlog. So I usually keep a quarter in my car, or my purse. There's always quarters. Somehow there weren't quarters, and I was like, crap, because I knew I had to buy a lot of random stuff. But I had this in the trunk, so I took this in. Uh, I don't know how it looks to you, but it's really actually big. I was dragging this around the store <laughs> and like just set it down in like every aisle and just like put stuff in it. It was so heavy. I was just like, why did I do this to myself? How did I not have quarters? So just basics from Aldi. We have two dozen eggs, 25 cents, not bad almond milk we have two cans of diced tomatoes oh you guys can see how irritated my skin is i'm not even gonna let it focus on it my whole oh okay and then bread and butter pickles which are like the best pickles ever cottage cheese these are back last season they had them the salted caramel they also have the apple cinnamon apple cheddar but this one is really good and this is new i've never seen this one golden maple Cheddar cheese with fenugreek. I don't know if I'm gonna be down with that fenugreek, but we shall see. Then we got some shredded cheeses because we use these pretty often. I love adding like white cheeses to ramen. Oh, so good. And then we have some seasoned zesty frozen fries. I've never had these before either. So, today's Saturday. Uh, there was no vlog last week. Um, I kind of just <laughs> gave up because allergic reaction was the allergic reaction but then it just ended up being eczema on the rest of my body and um i was just so physically irritated i was just like i can't do that and i worked late a couple nights and i didn't sleep and kind of the usual so i just was like no i'm not gonna vlog because i'm just it's gonna be me being irritated the whole time anyway so ow but um i mean nothing's really better but things are what do you call it you know when your body like adjusts to things? So now I'm like in a state of adjustedness. So, 
so today's plan is running errands, return, return, Trader Joe's. Also, the hair looks a little different, right? A um, couple weeks ago, right, I was like, oh, let me switch my part and do like a side part. Um, but that's all we did. We didn't really cut, like, cut it to kind of suit that. <laughs> so I was looking at the clips from last week and I'm like, oh my god, my hair looks horrible. I'm like sitting in the car, there's like a huge just trunk, like massive hair without any rhyme or reason. So now I could have mastered one haircut and that's the haircut you guys have seen many times. Uh, I don't know how to really cut bangs or layers when it's not part of that haircut. So every day for the past like I don't know 10 days I've been cutting just a little bit and trying to determine how deep I want this side part to be um, so this is what you're seeing now okay so don't don't go into places hungry we all know this rule I did not I had breakfast but I didn't really eat like a lot of time had passed since breakfast so as a teacher max returning something i'm trying not to buy anything i just went and returned stuff to forever 21 return stuff here but i always go in the snack section i got two more bags of the snackled raspberry potato chips these are really good the other flavors that this brand has are just like black truffle and there's um there's like other more common flavors so i'm just grabbing this I got these Vegan Rob's Cauliflower Puffs. Cauliflower is pretty low on the list, like cauliflower powder. But I got the mushrooms from this brand before, like the mushroom chips, and those were like really good. So I'm gonna try those. And lentil chips, but I got them because they're black pepper flavor or cracked pepper. And I like cracked pepper, black pepper, everything. This was a purchase because of Jen. You know who you are, you <laughs> DM me these. They're lemon cooler cashew meltaways. Am I like focusing? I'm sorry. Actually, this is better. Um, yeah, I love these kinds of things. And then they had another flavor that, what, <laughs> again, do not go hungry. Double chocolate chip pecan meltaway. I'm very excited for all of these. Should I be bad and open everything I haven't had? I will do that. I want to eat because I'm going to go to Trader Joe's at some point today and I don't want to overbuy there either. <laughs> okay, mm hmm yeah. Oh my god. I will buy these again. These look like Cheetos or like baked puffs. someone gave these to me they didn't tell me what they were I really wouldn't know what they are they don't taste very cauliflower flowery they're good though probably won't get them again okay I just realized these have like powder like powdered sugar all over them so I probably I'm not gonna eat them because they'll, they'll get all over my clothes okay so we got Trader Joe's Target we'll do Target first three pack of these spice liners these are usually pretty expensive from what i i mean these were what four four eighty eight for this pack um for organization oh a cooking utensil currently everyone pretty much every single one i have right now is red silicone and this one's like really nice and sturdy i think it was like a dollar dollar ninety eight finally sriracha mayo um and this is what is this I don't want to pronounce this wrong, but you know, Korean mayo. Uh, my target by me clearly is not <laughs> very diverse because this one is a different location, not as close to where I live. Okay, so tzatziki, I love this. Uh, butternut squash zigzags. I obviously got sucked in by the shape of these. Also, I don't think I've had butternut squash like raw before. So it says for salads, stir fry, soups, casseroles, pasta. I'm just, oh, I'm very excited. Got two of those. 
the lemon ricotta ravioli still available um, and I got a butternut squash triangoli I think that's how you pronounce it butternut squash mac and cheese um, I wasn't sure I was like I know this is very popular this is the first time they've had it and I'm like should I get one should I get five I wasn't really sure so I got one I think I plan on going back in the area next week so we'll if it's good I'll get you know three three to five Panera tikka masala corn dogs oh and the honey roasted pumpkin ravioli these chocolate mousse cookies chocolate cake inside when I saw these on Instagram I thought they were so much bigger but they're like so tiny they also have really big um pumpkin shaped sugar cookies fall zucchetti pasta and it's um butternut squash and then, as far as snacks go, I had this Ghosts and Bats potato snacks. Um, there really wasn't that much interesting snackage there. Plus, I'd already got all those other things from TJ Maxx, so I didn't really want to get too much snack things. So, I feel like all the places I went to today, I went to Target and I went here, and I felt like there was like not very much left of anything. So, we'll have to go back and when they restock. Okay, made this one, honey roasted pumpkin ravioli. Um, it's essentially a pumpkin puree with uh, ricotta. And yum. It is rather sweet. Um, not in like a bad way, just that like there isn't any really savory element to it at all. So you can definitely taste the pumpkin. It kind of tastes like what pumpkin pie tastes like with just a hint of ricotta. Uh, I like it though. It's good. Like, I like the lemon ricotta, so imagine that one, but with pumpkin filling. Okay, this thing. I like it, and I guess I could love it, but I'm just, I don't think I'm one of those, like, people who enjoy these kind of flavors, like, a lot. Um, I like the texture of the pasta. I just, and there's the good, the bechamel, and the, the cheeses all taste really nice together, but I can really taste, like, the nutmeg and the turmeric in it. And if you enjoy those flavors a lot, then I think you would like this, but I probably won't get it again. Okay, a little review on these. These are like so much smaller than what I thought, right? I told you, and they're, they're really good, but they remind me of like Hostess or like Little Debbie snacks, you know, like when there's cake with kind of frosting over it, they're good. The ingredients taste way more, um, I don't know what the word is, like high, like pure you know how like little debbie hostess cakes there's a little bit of like a there's no like fresh baked obviously vibe to them these have that um and they're really good i probably just won't get them again these two things are delicious i mean i think there were like eight or like nine or ten of these and the lemon cooler cashew ones there's probably the same amount they're quite um the packaging leaves a little to be desired. When you unwrap the plastic from it, this is just what it looks like inside. I'm sure at some point there were like three or four to a little like uh, lining, but whatever. I don't care. They're delicious. Okay, this stuff, so good. Um, I had it a little bit yesterday too, but I don't even know. What else do we say? It's super delicious. Like, uh, not as spicy as a sriracha mayo, but it has a little more of the umami elements to it. Yeah, I'm a big fan. A little pricey, not a very big bottle, but very good. Good morning. Wow. <laughs> that sounded really <laughs> forced. Okay. I t oh, God. I took one and a half Benadryl last night. There was a bit of a struggle this morning for sure. Okay, what should we talk about? My hair is a mess. I like re I released it from my um, so I put like a claw here, right? And then I put like a, I put the rest of it kind of up on a like in one of those like plastic type um, rubber bands for your hair. I really like those because they don't pull on your hair. But like, I released it today, and I was like, this doesn't look that bad. I kind of like it, so I didn't do anything to it. So slept in. This was done like a couple of days ago. Okay, yeah. So let's talk about Gilmore Girls because I finished all seven seasons finally and this is my final thought first of all Lorelai is I don't know if I particularly enjoyed her yet like she's funny her and Rory have like a really fun relationship but I find her to be an extremely selfish person 
and it doesn't like when push comes to shove she like acts appropriately and makes like the right choice but I feel like it takes a lot for her to get to that point and it's like too much so when you hit like season what end of season four beginning of season five Luke and Lorelai finally get together right and it's so exciting and it's so fun because you've been waiting so long for them to like just finally get together but my feeling was like oh if it took them this long to get together there's no way this show is just gonna let them stay together so the second they get together there's already this foreboding sense that it's going to end and in, in my like thinking I was like okay maybe Christopher comes back and fucks something up or maybe uh, Lorelai gets pregnant or maybe I don't know for some reason I thought Jess would come back with a child I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking there's a child somewhere. Well, I guess it, Luke ends up having a child, which I guess would make the most sense to fuck stuff up. Anyway, Lorelai is just like, gets these men, these fairly good guys and great guys even, and gets them to fall in love with her. And then they propose, and for some reason she cannot turn down a proposal. And then she... I don't know if their show ever really gets to the root of the problem as to why she can't be in a proper relationship. I think she's just flighty. <laughs> and then she's very inside her own feelings. And I don't know that she is ever really putting herself in their shoes because if she were, she would not make half the decisions she makes. Anyway, okay. Rory, I love her and Logan. I feel like Logan, minus the whole like kind of lazy air thing is the kind of guy like that personality is the kind of a guy I would gravitate towards generally like you know just like socially um they can navigate socially they kind of know the, what to say how to behave I feel like I've probably dated a couple people with that kind of personality obviously you enjoy I would I enjoy that otherwise I would not date that kind of person um but then at the end, he still exhibits all this like fuckboy behavior. And you're just like, okay, I've I've started the day in the life up, but I haven't finished the last season yet. Um, what else? Kirk? Oh my god! Uh, while watching the seasons, and he appears topless a few times, it really <laughs> messed with my mind how like a how proportionate or how the proportion of the human body is. That was just a little bit like whoa. But for the Netflix miniseries with those four episodes, first of all, I think it's odd that Lorelai has not grown. It's, why is it that she appears to be even more immature in like the, the reboot? Um, also, on top of that, it felt like everyone, it's one thing when a new actor inhabits an old character, but these are all the original actors playing people that played for a long time and I don't know why it feels like they're they're playing like caricatures of their characters like it's overdone overacted it almost feels like they're getting they're like making fun of their characters and I know they're not but you know what I mean um Lorelai's face is so frozen it like when she's happy she's sad she's mad she's surprised she looks the exact same way in every single scene I in fact cringe when she's on camera now because this is the thing that confuses me. When a celebrity, actor, actress, model, whatever, when they get bad procedures done, I get really confused because like, aren't you in the know? You are surrounded by people that get procedures done or, in, or things injected all the time. How is it that there is bad work and that it can look so bad? And I do understand that like the patient plays a role in, um, you know how much they want done and they can push a doctor but I also feel like really good doctors are kind of like you know this is where you should be stopping like this is where it gets into that territory where people are probably going to really know that you've had some work done also I love Logan because the guy that plays him was Carrie in The Good Wife and I love The Good Wife and when your shows when your love of shows intersects it's like really really exciting <sighs> okay lot of talk about Gilmore Girls. That was like my whole drive to work. Okay, I cooked this up. Like seriously, how stinking cute are these? They look like little, little pumpkins. They smell really good. 
They don't taste very butternut squashy. It kind of just tastes like regular pasta, but oh my god, so adorable. Good morning. It's been a while since we've done this. Okay, skincare is the same. I'm not going to show you that, but we're going to jump into foundation. I have the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup. My shade is 1W2 Sand. Again, I have it in like a little cushion and... I've just been loving this. I put this um, on with like a sponge. I just tap it on. Sometimes I only do the T-zone if I just want that area to be matte and I'll do the rest of the face with like a glowier foundation or I'll just do it as... I almost use it as a primer because it just makes everything on top of it stay on. So we've got that pretty much in the T-zone. Actually, I have it on in the, over the entire face today. Um, I'm just trying to remember because I've been kind of jumping back and forth. But still love this. It looks so beautiful. It lasts all day. Okay, so I showed you guys this thing before. The Maybelline Master Camo in the shade Apricot. And I love it so much. It cancels out immediately. The pigment is very intense. But it's also very, very thin. And I wanted to try out some other colors to mix and match. This is in the shade Rose. And this is a very light pink. Okay, so let me also mix them together because that's what I've been doing. So I'll show you them individually and then I usually put the orange down first on either side of the under eyes, just in this like inner corner area. And then I put the pink on top of it. So there's the shades, apricot rose. And then when I mix them together, I get this shade. And it just blends in and it's pretty much perfection on the under eyes. I've been kind of playing with under eye concealer and I couldn't really find anything that I've been like super loving. I just, it's not that I don't have anything I love, I just have been trying to play with new stuff. So I have been using the Milani Conceal and Perfect Foundation um, on days when I only use the Estee Lauder Double Wear in the center of the face and then I want the rest of the face to be glowy. So what I've been doing is, this is also in a cushion. And I've been using this with the sponge and just using it as my under eye concealer. And I kind of like it. It's not like intense coverage like, say, the NARS or Tarte Shape Tape or something like that. But it still works and it looks really pretty underneath the skin because it doesn't really, <clears throat> excuse me, look like there's anything under there. Okay, this is a newer product. Uh, this is the Fenty Beauty Universal Invisimat Blotting Powder. I really, 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 really like this. Um, I will do a review, I guess, like a haul, a haul slash review of the items I picked up um, and the ones that I really like. But this powder, it's like a pink shade, like a light, light pink shade, uh, but it's translucent, like you don't see it. And I know that I love my Charlotte Tilbury powders, but those both, I have the shades two and three, and they both are tinted, obviously, so they provide more coverage. So I'm actually quite light right now, so I'm gonna probably pick up shade one, which is like the fairest shade, and that will probably blend in better. But this just goes on, and it's amazing when you watch people review it, because no matter what skin tone, undertone, shade they are, they put this on, you don't see this powder. It's really, really beautiful. I love it. I'm obsessed with it for the face, but for the under eyes, um, I can still see a little bit on the inner corners, but I mean, what powder don't you see? Like it's, at some point you get close enough, you're gonna see the powder, but it just looks really beautiful. It looks very, um, it blurs. The tiniest amount just kind of blurs very fine lines and your pores. When I like put it on here, it instantly just kind of does a blurring effect and then if I put a little more on, my pores are completely gone. Everyone has somewhat visible pores even if your skin is really great. I've been piling on bronzer lately and I've been using tones that are slightly more orange because that's what I prefer uh, during the winter or like cooler temperatures. And I've also been going for glowier bronzers. I was going to say glowier concealers. This is by Givenchy. This is in the shade number four. Oh, this is like, is this like, no, I think five is like the darkest shade, but I've had this for a while. This is probably on like year or two of it. I go in and out of using it. That's a swatch. To contour a little bit, probably shouldn't have contoured that much. I feel like we might have over contoured a little bit in this lighting. Um, I feel like I have very much cheek going on. 
but I use the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess in the shade medium because it's like a much cooler tone and I use this brush I love this brush for contouring it's the Trish McAvoy 86 Petite Kabuki uh, I do believe these are made in Japan. I will double check that and I will link it below. Everything is always linked below, but let me do a swatch of this so you can see. And I have this shade. It's a little cooler and a little lighter. I have this um, right in this area kind of blended out and then I kind of have it down the nose. Okay, let's talk about brows. I have this Lancome Brow Styler. I got this because the shape of the brush is incredibly unique to me. And you're like, okay, brow products, they range, there's so many excellent brow products at the drugstore. However, if you are someone like me and brows are a thing that you have a lot of trouble with, you're always willing to try anything. Uh, I feel like it's kind of like foundation. I have really good skin generally and most foundations will look good on me, but I can still tell if a foundation is good or bad, you know what I mean? So I think the same kind of goes for brows. People who have fuller brows or more brow hairs can get a lot of products to work for them, but they still have their preference. They still know if something's like good or bad. So this is why I love this. This has a very different brush and it just kind of goes through your brows in a way that it kind of thickens each one and it doesn't really clump them together. Uh, I feel like if you have less brow hairs, you don't want something that clumps them together. Same goes for mascara. You don't want to use a mascara that clumps your like five lashes into three lashes. So something like this for me, I love. I have mine in the darkest shade, but look at this brush. It's very different. It has longer, spikier, I don't know if you want to call them bristles. So we have one from Glossier and one from Maybelline. And I'm gonna kind of show you what else. This is the Glossier one. This is what is the standard, I think. Whenever you look at brow gels or kind of brow tamers, this is the brush you see. And there's nothing wrong with this. I quite like the formula of this, but the brush gets, how you see the product on the brush is essentially how it's gonna end up on your brows. So this is kind of clumpy, so I have to brush these out even though I like the formula. This one is Maybelline. This one, works for me. I tend to only use this in the front of the brows because it is very flat and you can easily deposit a lot of product and like all kind of gel products coming out of a tube, the longer you have it, the clumpier or thicker the product is going to get. But this is another version. So I feel like this gives you a really good idea of why the Lancome one is so different. I'll probably be following up with you guys on this product just because brow products I like to come back to because I feel like amongst all of the makeup that I use on a daily basis, brow products are something I just keep on like switching up because you just keep thinking there's something better out there. So we'll follow up with you on this. Uh, for the pencils, uh, to kind of fill in a little bit, we have the Brow Wiz. I'm just trying to go through and use up all the ones I got like you know for the longest time this was like one of the best eye pencils right and now there's just so many so I have just kind of been trying to go through all the colors I got because I have like I want to say like five different shades oh I skipped a face product this is Colourpop Wisp this is probably my favorite highlighter from them this came out on their initial launch when they first launched highlighters this is still like my favorite shade to date I have it pretty much all over, down the nose, on the cheeks, above the lips, duh. Did I put it on the eyebrow? No, I didn't, I have a shadow there. But this and like Butterfly Beach are probably my two favorite shades and they came out like when they first launched and they're still my favorite. For the eyes, we've got the Nude Sticks Magnetic Matte Eye Color in Fig. I really like this. I've been really just using this and Tara every day because they're just so, they're matte, which is great. They blend out so easy, and then every shadow just goes on so beautifully on top of them. So there's a swatch of fig. It's so beautiful and like fall appropriate. Next up is an eyeshadow palette from Kiko. If you guys remember a while back, I had showed you a eyeshadow palette from Stellar that I was really angry at <laughs> because it was like 40 bucks, and it kind of looked like this. This is called the Smart Eyeshadow Palette from Kiko. This is number two. I want to say I've seen three to four versions of this. I have chose this one because <laughs> obviously it's like the easiest one to wear and it's very me. It goes neutral to warm, 
tones. There's no like, I wouldn't say there's any real cool tones in here. Even the things that lean, that you would think lean cool, I think are still very neutral. So on the eyes today, I have this on the lid, this on the lower lash line, this on the lower lash line, and this in the top lash line just a little bit, and this in the brow bone. And that's those, and those are swatches of everything that I just showed you on the eyes. I think that the powders in here, like the matte ones, are just slightly powdery, but they're nothing that, you know, mattes are always going to be a little powdery compared to like a shimmer or a metallic. They just blend so easily onto the eyes. There is one shimmer right here that I'm going to show you, but I just, I've used all of these, maybe except for this shade. Uh, you could probably use that for kind of an all over lid shade. But this is really great to prep your eyelid. This is really great to prep your eyelid. This is the one shimmery shade. Let me show you. That's the shimmer. It's really soft and really beautiful. You could easily use it as a highlighter. But I mean, obviously the pans are quite tiny, so I don't know how you would, you would really have to have some precise highlighting going on. But I've used this for the inner corner and I've used this all over the lid by itself and on top of other shadows. And it just gives off the softest, prettiest glimmer. It's what I would call like an essential eye palette. No matter what color you choose to start with, your eye look will end up looking really good. It's beautiful, it's like a basic eye, it's a daytime eye, it's... You could go smoky if you just kind of stayed in this area, but overall, I would say your looks can be very soft and you can add a little bit of drama with like the darker shades. I would recommend this one to you. I looked at the other shade combinations and I think this one's the easiest one to work with. For eyeliner, I use the Black Up Matte Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. Because of a lot of the makeup being kind of glowy, glowy bronzer, glowy highlight, the eyes I want to keep pretty matte. This is one of the best matte eyeliners. The only issue for me is I don't get a lot of precision with this and I need a lot of precision. However, if you are just trying to cover up your fake lashes, you know that line that creates that you get sometimes either because you have your glue is a little shiny or maybe your eyeliner or your eye base is a little shiny. This mattifies everything. You just run it right over your lashes and you are good to go. I have on pretty thick today. You can see, but it's very black. So you really can't see my lash line, which is great. Uh, and then to finish off and do the wing, I have the Sephora Fine Line. Um, I just need something a little more precise to do a wing for me. So the Sephora is not as opaque as the black up, but to do a wing it's perfectly fine. But you can see like this black up one is so dark, so matte. Uh, and if you're someone that doesn't need to do something like you have larger eyes, i.e. you have larger eyes or more lid space, and you can afford to just go in and have like like a medium thickness as far as like a line goes, that's a, this, this, this is an excellent eyeliner. So glowy is a very big thing. Also looking more awake and trying to look like I've gotten some sleep. Some sleep. This is the Kiko Milano 3D Hydra Lip Gloss. It's in the shade 11. I love this packaging. I'm not one for packaging. When I talk about products, I very rarely touch on packaging unless like it's really beautiful because I'm not someone that gets sucks in by that kind of thing. But just hold on, just look. It's just, you know, has futuristic vibes. It looks like, you know what it reminds me a little bit of? Like USBs. Anyway, this is what the shade looks like. And I know that looks really intense and that's actually how intense it looks when I like first put it on. It goes on like a lip balm. It, it's incredibly hydrating. So that's what it looks like when I put it on, but then, you know, like with me, I tap in everything. And this is the only thing I have on. No lip liner, nothing. There's something about this formula where it kind of stains your lip just a little bit. And then throughout the day, I've noticed when I come home from work, my lips still look like this. It might not be as glossy. Actually, there's probably no gloss because I've had lunch. But this color stays on and looks vibrant. Okay, so I guess that's it for makeup. We are going to go to work now probably. Probably change. It's probably a good idea. 